Hey guys, welcome back. Sergeant Johnson is undoubtedly one of Halo's most iconic characters, loved and adored by millions. Even 11 years after his death, this irreplaceable alpha male remains one of Halo fans' favourite characters, even with newer gen Halo fans who maybe didn't experience the original trilogy in its prime. However, those who are now only experiencing the trilogy for the first time, and maybe even many of those who played it back in its heyday, may have noticed a pretty glaring plot hole in Halo Combat Evolved. It appears that Sergeant Johnson is killed and infected by the Flood. Now of course we know that this is most definitely not the case, so today we are going to be looking at what actually happened to Sergeant Johnson when he was ambushed by the Flood in Halo CE. So a few days after the Pillar of Autumn crash landed on Alpha Halo, the surviving members of the crew began what would be a successful assault on a Covenant base, spearheaded by a small battalion of ODSTs. This base became the UNSC's primary base of operations during their time on the ring, and would subsequently be named Alpha Base. It was at Alpha Base where a captured elite, known only by his surname Qualamy, would be interrogated by the UNSC, revealing information that would unleash a dark, ancient infestation onto the battlefields of Alpha Halo. Qualamy told the interrogators that he had been part of a team tasked with delivering weapons to a force, guarding a mysterious foreigner structure situated in a swampy region of the ring. This led Captain Keyes to believe the structure was something of extreme importance, so he led a small task force there to investigate, a task force commanded by Sergeant Johnson. However, as soon as they reached the facility, the Marines knew that something was off. There were no Covenant forces guarding it, and the few bodies they found within the structure had been mangled and defiled beyond belief. These bodies would ultimately serve as a dark form of foreshadowing, as when they reached a dead-end room, they were ambushed by a horde of infection forms. The Marines began to fire their weapons, panicking at the sight of these strange, disgusting creatures. As his brothers fell and were infected one by one by the Flood, Sergeant Johnson continued to fight on relentlessly, until eventually, an infection form made it past his defences. That said, despite the infection form managing to latch onto his neck, it found it incredibly difficult to infect him. So difficult that it gave Johnson enough time to free himself from its grasp. He managed to kill it and then began his escape. On his way out from the room, he put down some of his squad mates who had turned, putting them out of their painful misery, the most ethical choice in a terrifying situation, and locked the door, hoping to contain these horrors within. Determined not to suffer the same fate as his fellow Leathernecks, he quickly retraced his steps through the facility, heading straight for the exit, but now this underground labyrinth was teeming with the undead. He was constantly attacked from all angles by more infected marines, covenant and infection forms, but using his alpha male tenacity, he blasted through it all, and eventually made it to the elevator that he and his squad used to descend into this terrifying facility. Except this time, he rode it alone. Johnson then eventually escaped the ring, on board a pelican with some of the other surviving marines from the autumn, moments before it was destroyed. Shortly after the ending of Combat Evolved, they ran into Chief and Cortana on board their longsword, which genuinely shocked Chief. He'd seen Private Jenkins' helmet cam footage of the Flood outbreak, and he'd been in that very room shortly after and not encountered any survivors. Thinking Johnson was infected by the Flood, Chief drew his magnum and was prepared to kill him. But luckily for us, Cortana managed to talk him down. She convinced him that clearly Johnson was still human, and that he wasn't infected, but she wasn't actually entirely correct. The reason the Flood had trouble infecting Johnson was because of certain biological augmentation that he'd had in the past. See, Johnson was a part of the Orion Project, which essentially acted as the Spartan 1 program, humanity's first attempts at creating biologically enhanced super soldiers. The project was discontinued, but one of the main alterations that only did to its members were genetic modifications, which in turn made the process of infection that infection forms undergo to turn a host into a combat form extremely difficult. That said though, the infection form that latched onto Johnson did actually manage to begin the process. When the crew made it back to Reach, more on that in a minute, Chief and Halsey secretly reviewed his medical files, and they found flood DNA in his blood. Halsey even picked up on some unique regenerative abilities that he'd gained from almost being infected. In short, Sergeant Johnson became nothing short of a medical marvel, and Dr. Halsey prepared a file to be reviewed by Oni regarding the flood 
and his survival of it. This file included all the data surrounding technology that could be used to efficiently counter the flood, Johnson's medical files, along with his and also Private Jenkins' mission files, and also the flood's interaction with the Spartan 1 augmentations. However, given Oni's ruthless taste of the disturbing, she feared that naming Johnson would lead to them taking him away to a dark corner of the galaxy to become the subject of disgusting human experiments. So she then prepared a second file with his name and any reference to him scrubbed. Both files had their benefits and also their consequences, both macro and micro. So ultimately, Halsey gave Master Chief the option of which one to pass on to Oni. Given that he was now friends with Sergeant Johnson, after some hesitation, Chief chose to destroy the file that included any references to him, keeping him safe from Oni's clutches. But back to Reach, how the hell did they get back to Reach? Well, long story short, the Marines, led by Chief and Johnson, boarded a Covenant cruiser nearby, the Ascendant Justice, and fought their way through to the bridge where they gained control of the ship. Their original plan was to return to Earth, but that would have breached the Cole Protocol, as the Covenant would have had access to Earth's coordinates. So instead, they decided to return to Reach, unknowing of its current state. When they arrived, the entire planet, aside from a few patches, was entirely glassed, and they rendezvoused with Halsey and the surviving Spartan 2s after the fall of Castle Base and their escape through its underground tunnels. Johnson's alpha male awareness made him notice that they were being surrounded by a very, very large force of camouflage Covenant soldiers, so they made a hasty getaway to the UNSC Gettysburg, a damaged frigate that had been fused with the Ascendant Justice to create a sort of hybrid ship, but it functioned so it was better than nothing. Johnson then suggested Operation First Strike, arguably his most genius, significant contribution to the war effort. An operation that saw the destruction of a major Covenant battle station and 488 Covenant ships, along with also delaying the Covenant's discovery of Earth. Johnson and crew then returned to Earth, and Johnson went on to receive his Colonial Cross, awarded to him for his incredibly heroic actions during the Battle of Alpha Halo. And that is how Sergeant Avery Johnson survived the Flood and also escaped Alpha Halo alone, and then also went on to gain unnatural abilities and benefits from being ever so slightly infected by the Flood. I wasn't originally going to cover what he did after escaping Alpha Halo in this video, but I don't know, I figured fuck it, it's more Halo lore, and I, I knew you guys would enjoy it. And that's all for now, I hope you guys enjoyed this little look into a period of our Lord and Saviour Avery Johnson's life that sadly got pretty ignored and glossed over by the games. After all, it's classified. Big thank you to my lads supporting me over on Patreon, Ardent, Tomahawk, Evan, Momo, Shikata, Mjolnir, Matthew, Pierre, Tony, Jim, Zach, Jack Madden, Eric Brown, Sam Grafton, Bruin98, Hayden Woods, and Gareth Davies. I really appreciate it. Thank you so much for watching, guys. I really appreciate it. And I'll catch you in the next one.